This video was commissioned by Patreon supporter and channel member Sean Barry. If there's a video you like for me to make, then click the link in the description. Fires on the Plane is an award-winning novel written by Shohei Ooka and published in 1951, following a soldier suffering from illness and hunger in a struggle to survive in the Philippines during the final days of World War II, all while experiencing a haunting descent into madness. It is a powerful anti-war story that shows the horrors of war on full display, even going as far as to acknowledge several war atrocities such as murder of innocent civilians and cannibalism. Ooka was drafted during World War II and used his experiences as an influence when writing the novel. The book would receive critical acclaim and earn Ooka a Yomiuri Prize for Literature, and would go on to receive two film adaptations, one in 1959 directed by Kon Ichikawa and another in 2014 by Shinya Tsukamoto. In this video, we'll be looking at both versions. Kanichi Kawa is one of Japan's most versatile filmmakers, known for making films such as Tokyo Olympiad, An Actor's Revenge, The Burmese Harp, and The Wanderers. Tokusatsu fans may know him as the director of the Tale of the Bamboo Cutter adaptation, Princess from the Moon. Ichikawa would direct the 1959 adaptation of Fires on the Plane, which would be distributed by Daie. The film stars Eiji Funakoshi, who plays the main character, Tamura. Tokusatsu fans may remember him as Dr. Hidaka in the original Gamera. Tamura is an Imperial soldier who has tuberculosis and is sent to a medical facility only to be rejected. However, the facility is attacked and Tamura wanders alone, whether he's helping fellow comrades, searching for food, essentially doing whatever he can to survive as the Second World War is coming to a close on the Japanese front. The 1959 version of Fires on the Plane showcases what Daie is capable of with a sizable budget with its rather impressive set pieces and makeup effects. One instance being how as the film progresses, Tamara's face gradually changes to draw his descent into madness, coupled with the fact that he gets skinnier as the film goes on. This is because Eiji Funakoshi and the rest of the cast actually fasted during production as a means to achieve some form of authenticity. Additionally, the film is surprisingly gory for 1959. Plus, it has some touches of dark humor to further draw in the feeling of insanity. And much like the source material, the film does address war crimes committed by the Japanese. All of this is added to great effect with the film's hopeless atmosphere and its music composed by the renowned Yasushi Akutagawa. Should also add that Mickey Curtis notably appears in the film as a soldier who goes down a grotesque rabbit hole. Fires on the Plane from 1959 is hailed as one of the greatest Japanese films ever made, and it's easy to see why. Not only does the film address a serious issue while also being based on a very important part of Japanese history, it's crafted wonderfully on all fronts, and makes for a very haunting and disturbing experience. The film also took home some awards in Japan, and was a hit at international film festivals. And finally, the film is available on DVD from the Criterion Collection. Now we get to the 2014 version directed by the great Shinya Tsukamoto, who also stars in it. Tsukamoto is a huge fan of the original novel, and while he loved Kanichikawa's adaptation, he always wanted to do his own take on it, hence why it's not a remake of the Ichikawa version. The film was also a passion project for Tsukamoto, but unfortunately he couldn't afford the money to finance the film, and adding to that, this is probably his most ambitious project yet. Thankfully, Tsukamoto was able to get the film rolling thanks to the legendary Martin Scorsese. Yep, that Martin Scorsese, known for Taxi Driver, Goodfellas, The Departed, and many other classics. And this was because Scorsese turned out to be a huge fan of Shinya Tsukamoto that he cast him as a major supporting role in his film Silence, a story of religious persecution in feudal Japan. As a result, Tsukamoto was able to get the project funded, something he is eternally grateful for. Despite being still fairly low budget compared to other Japanese films, the money would be put to good use such as makeup, set pieces, locations, gore effects, extras, and so forth. And it really shows. Keep in mind, this is the same guy who directed Tetsuo the Iron Man in Tokyo Fist. For starters, the color palette in Tsukamoto's version is just immaculate. The greens, the oranges, the browns, the blues, they're all vibrant and breathe so much life into the film probably as a means to contrast the film's dark and hopeless tone. And this is thanks to how the cinematography emphasizes the emotions of the characters and the environment that surrounds them. And unlike the Ichikawa version, there's hardly any music in this film, save for a couple scenes, which only makes it even more grounded and unsettling. The film is extremely gory too, and is probably Tsukamoto's most violent film to date, and it doesn't feature a single ounce of CGI. 
everything in this film is 100% practical. One scene that really sticks in my mind is when the characters are ambushed by American forces with tons of blood, gore, dismemberment, fighting over severed limbs, and this rather hilarious shot of Tsukamoto with a helmet covering his face. Kinda reminds me of the soldier from TF2. The historical attention to detail is incredible too. One example being how the film progressively becomes grimier as it goes along, as well as the depiction of war crimes. Tsukamoto puts his own nightmarish spin on the source material, adding more of a surreal documentary type of feel to it, while also managing to throw in some of his usual dark humor, like this one guy who explodes out of nowhere after triggering a landmine. As mentioned before, Tsukamoto himself plays the lead, but other notable actors appear in the film too, such as beloved actor Lily Frankie, as well as Tsukamoto regulars Tatsuya Nakamura and Yuko Nakamura. The film premiered at the 71st Venice International Film Festival in 2014, and would go on to receive critical acclaim in Japan and internationally on top of becoming a box office success. The film has a Blu-ray release by Third Window Films, but sadly it's only Region B. Hopefully Aero Video can fix that one day. Upon initial viewing of the Tsukamoto version, I was a little thrown off guard with its stylistic choices, and I personally didn't find it as compelling as the Ichikawa version, but over time, I was able to warm up to it and appreciate the film even more for how unique it is and how strong it holds together. To put it short, I highly recommend both movies. If you want a haunting tale of someone's descent into madness, check out the Ichikawa version. If you want something with a bit more style while also being more graphic with its depiction of war, check out the Tsukamoto version. They're both incredibly unique in their own ways, and I always enjoy revisiting them. But what about you? Have you seen Fires on the Plane? Which version is your favorite? Drop a comment below, and I want to give a very special shout out to my channel members and my Patreon supporters. If you like what you see, then definitely consider supporting the channel with the link in the description, where for at least a single dollar you can get access to my Discord server. And other than that, you can also get early access to videos, exclusive content, commission video requests, and receive a t-shirt of your choice from my Public. Also, I give a huge shout out to Sean of Shots of Japanese Cinema for editing this video. Feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and this is Titan Goji, signing off.